Good day, Church of the Way. It's a beautiful sunny day today. Fantastic is lockdown level four. We're in day eight. If you're reading with our chapter day readings, uh, they are available on the website. We're in Luke chapter 23. Uh, we are going to break bread again together today. So if you want to push pause, go get some bread and some juice ready and uh, then come back and we're good to go again. And uh, Luke 23, it's a, it's a nice chapter. There's a lot of people in this chapter. There's the chief priest, there's Pilate, there's Herod, there's the soldiers, Herod soldiers, Pilate soldiers, the crowd, Barabbas, Simon of Cyrene, the other two criminals, the centurion, Joseph of Arimathea, the woman who followed Jesus. A lot of people all doing a lot of everything and stuff. And yet everything of the whole chapter revolves around Jesus Christ. Jesus, the Son of God. He's there in the pre end of the previous chapter. Actually, he's declared guilty of blasphemy by the Jewish half priest because they ask him, are you the Messiah? And he says, well, it is as you say. And it's quite ironic, isn't it? Because it's a charge that's only true if Jesus was not the Messiah. But he was the Messiah. So the charge is false. It sounds complicated, but it's quite easy, really. And then we actually come now to the, 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 the civil trial of Jesus before um, before Pilate and actually we find that Pilate declares Jesus innocent actually the charge against him there is treason and uh, Pilate says there's no evidence of treason actually he's not guilty sends him off to Herod Herod also uh, comes back with a with a verdict of actually there's nothing there's no charge there's no basis of which to charge him and so both Herod and Pilate Jesus is declared innocent the only charge that stands is the charge of being Messiah and that's the one that is true and in John 14, 30, Jesus t tells his disciples, I will not ma say much more to you, for the prince of this world is coming. He has no hold over me, but he comes so that the world may learn that I love the Father and I do exactly what my Father has commanded me. Come now, let us leave. And what an incredible testimony that is from Jesus, because actually the devil has no hold on him, nothing on him, has nothing on him, but he only does what the Father commands. And so you have Jesus Christ, the Son of God, innocent, guiltless, is sent to the cross, crucified, dies on the cross and is buried. And there's all these people in the chapter and yet it revolves around Jesus. And Jesus is in absolute control of all of the steps all along the way. And each of these people have to navigate and decide what is their response to Jesus. What are they going to do? How do they position themselves? You have the chief priests that were absolutely opposed to Jesus, violent, antagonistic, ruthless, getting into lying and deceiving to, to have their way. You've got the soldiers who maybe just seem to follow the orders, although you see their arrogance and their mocking and their criti critical, critical spirit. The crowd, probably mostly ignorant, just actually whipped into a frenzy and following whoever makes the most noise. Barabbas. Barabbas is an interesting one because you wonder what he must have made of the whole situation. He didn't ask to be involved. He was actually in jail for his own stuff and his own um, insurrection. Actually, he was the one who was guilty of, of provoking treason. And he just gets, gets let go in place of Jesus. You've got the woman who wept as they followed Christ to the cross and wept and just were absolutely heartbroken watching Christ. And you've got the two criminals. One takes the opportunity to, say, to cry out and say, God, have, have mercy on me. Actually, Jesus, remember me. And the other just hardens his heart. He has the same opportunity to respond to Christ. He has the same opportunity to cry out for mercy and chooses not to. You have the centurion who, when Jesus was, actually gives up his spirit and dies, he lets out an exclamation and, and says, praise the Lord. And you don't know if it, is it just a heartfelt, is it a, is it a heartfelt conviction or is it just a, 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 an exclamation of the moment? Oh, wow, I've seen something extraordinary that I've not seen before. Oh, praise the Lord. And we don't know, was it just a, a, a religious thing or, or did it actually change his life? And then you have Joseph who really responds with absolute honor and care to really take, take responsibility to go and look after Jesus' body and make sure that he's buried properly. And the women also come with that response of honor of actually wanting to just look after Jesus and take care, for, for, care of him even in his death. And the scripture records that Jesus calls out from the cross to all of these people, everybody gathered around. He calls out from the cross, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. 
Sure, incredible, incredible. Jesus' offer of forgiveness to all men. And so today we've got to look and say, what is our response to Jesus? Does actually, when we read, when we read about the cross and the crucifixion of Christ, does it bring us to worship? Does it bring us to actually just humble ourselves and, uh, with absolute gratitude and, and awe and that, we go, that we just realize, how, Lord, how precious it was that you were willing to give up your life for us, that you were willing to, to go to the cross on our behalf? Because each one of us many times is like Barabbas. We're the ones who are guilty and who are set free. And Christ is the one who took our place and died on the cross and took our pain and enabled our forgiveness. And so actually our response as we look and as we read the chapter is that, is it one of awe? Is it one of just absolute appreciation, of absolute delight and absolute, Lord, thank you so much. We appreciate what you've done for us lord we actually the, the the forgiveness that you've granted us is valuable and precious in our lives and so let's break bread together and jesus on the night he was betrayed he took bread and he celebrated the passover meal with his disciples and he gave thanks to his father and he said actually as i break this this bread it's my body it represents my body which is broken for each and every one of us and he says do this in remembrance of me and boy, as we stop and we just consider Christ and we consider his death on the cross, we've got so much to remember, so much to actually just stop and, and give, give thought to, give, give consideration to. Actually, what does it mean for you to be forgiven of your sins? What does it mean for you to know Christ? I mean, just remember a little bit of where you've come from. Remember actually how Christ has saved you, what he saved you from. And what he's brought you into, this covenant that we now share of actually being called sons of God, sons of the Most High God, a covenant that God is for us. He loves us. He cares for us. We've got a lot to remember. And so let's break bread together and remember what he's done for us. And then we know after supper, Jesus took the cup. And again, he gave thanks to his father. And he said, this is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for the forgiveness of sins. And sure, again, so much to remember, so much to appreciate, so much just to, to value and to, to just acknowledge, God, you have, you have accomplished so much on our behalf. And Lord, what a privilege it is to have the forgiveness of sins. Lord, that, that when you forgive our sins, they are washed white than the snow. That you don't remember them. You don't hold, us, hold them against us anymore. And Lord, you also, with forgiveness, release cleansing and healing into our lives. And so, Lord, we appreciate and we honor you and we bless you for that, for your sacrifice today. In Jesus' name. So let's pray together. Father, may we just stand in awe and appreciation of you today. Lord God, may we just be reminded afresh of your incredible great love for us. Lord, of, of what you've accomplished on our behalf and bringing us out of the kingdom of darkness and putting us into the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ, of the great redemption that you've accomplished on our behalf. That, Lord, we stand as children of the Most High God. And today, Father, we just pray for our country. We pray for South Africa. We pray, Father God, for, for deliverance from COVID. We pray, Lord God, for healing for our country, for our, for our nation, for our people, Lord God. And we pray, Lord God, that they may have opportunity to respond to Jesus, to respond and accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior, find forgiveness of sins, find healing. And Lord God, we pray for righteousness to prevail in our nation. In Jesus' name, amen.